Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And this module, we're going to be looking at the Sunburst chart. Now, the Sunburst is really kind of like a donut chart. So if you've played around with a donut chart that's natively available in Power BI, it's similar to that, but it's really a multi-level donut chart, which means you're able to look at hierarchical data in it very easily. So if you have hierarchies in your data, think about levels that you would have that you would normally look at the data. You can see in the screenshot here, here's an example where maybe I have North America, and then I want to drill into Florida, and then drill into a particular city, perhaps where I make sales or where I do work. With this chart, you're able to easily be able to see with inside of a donut chart those different hierarchical levels. Now, this chart is developed by Microsoft. Let's go ahead and take a look at where you can go download it, how you can import it, and then how to use it. All right, so first thing you want to do is go download the visual by going to the custom visuals gallery, which you can see here. If you go to visuals.powerbi.com, you'll be able to come to this gallery. And if you slide down, you may change the order of these, but uh, as you slide down, you should be able to find the sunburst chart. And I'll go ahead and select the sunburst chart, tell it that I want to download that custom visual. You can also come through here and download any samples of it if you'd like. There's a few samples that Microsoft has made ahead of time for you. So I'm going to go ahead and download this visual. I've already downloaded it on my machine, so I'm going to just hit X on this, and I'll work my way back over to the Power BI desktop application. Now, for this example, I've already prepared a data set for you. You can download this data set as part of the links below as you watch this video. And uh, so what I'll do is go up to the Get Data section to go connect to that data set. So I'll go to Get Data and choose Excel. Most of our data sources have been Excel throughout this course just because it's easy for you to connect to. And so I'll select Excel here. And once Excel pops open, I'll go ahead and find underneath my data section here where I've saved the file I provided to you. It's called Region Sales. It's going to be the file that you'll use. So I'll select Region Sales and then hit Open. Once you click on Open, you should see that there is one spreadsheet in here called Quantity. That is the spreadsheet we want for this example. So go ahead and select that Quantity spreadsheet. You can see what the data is going to look like here in a moment. And then hit Load to load that into our data model. Now with that data now brought into our data model, you can tell that because you can see the fields listed on the right hand side. You can also tell it that you want to import this custom visual. That's really our next step is we've downloaded the custom visual. Now we have to go tell it to import the custom visual, which you can do by selecting the little import button right here. That's the three ellipses where it says import from file. You can also import a custom visual by going up to the file menu and selecting import Power BI custom visual. That's another way to do the exact same thing. So I'll go ahead and select that. It's going to prompt me and say, hey, you're about to import a visual that's outside of the native components. Are you sure you want to do that? Yes, I do. It is a warning there about, hey, you could be using non-Microsoft technologies. In this case, Microsoft actually developed this one. And then I'll go over to the Power BI custom visual folder that I've stored all my visuals in. And I'll find the sunburst chart here. So I'll select the sunburst chart and hit open. Hit OK. And you can see the sunburst chart now appears here inside my visualizations pane. So I'll go ahead and select that and add that to my design surface. Now, in addition to this chart, I'd also like to add in a matrix as well. So I'm going to add in a matrix, which is a native visual that you already have here. And I'm going to put these two side by side, and we'll start to add some data to them so you can see uh, what they look like side by side and, and get an idea of how you can look at, um, in different ways, hierarchical data inside of Power BI. All right, so let's work with the matrix first. Inside the matrix, what I'd like to do is add in the uh, the group column, the country field, the region, and the quantity. And you can see here that it's a pretty small text size. So I'm going to go ahead and bump up that text size a bit so we can actually read this. There we go. And you'll also notice there's a ton of different total rows here, different row totals that have been populated in here. If you don't really want all those row totals, you can remove them. There's an option here underneath the uh, format settings underneath general where you can both increase the text size, which I just did a moment ago, and you can also remove row totals and column totals. So I'm going to remove the row totals here just because I want to see the values. I don't really care so much about having a total value. All right, so we've gotten this table, and that's going to help us compare what we have in the sunburst chart that we're about to add. So I'm going to go ahead and select into the sunburst chart area over here on the left-hand side. I made it rather large. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add in those fields that we did, that, and same fields that we did inside of the matrix. So I'll add in the group. I'll add in, let's add in the quantity so you can see how it kind of grows. So here's, here's how it starts when I only have one part of the hierarchy. But if I add in other parts of my hierarchy, like country, for example, you'll see that it actually expands out into another level of the hierarchy. So I can see the group being the first center part of the donut here. And then the next layer of the donut is my country. In some cases, the group and the country have a one-to-one -one relationship between the two. I have Pacific and Australia. There's only one 
country that I have inside the uh, the group called Pacific. So in that case, it ma makes sense that there's only a one-to-one -one there. You can also see that in the data here. You can see Pacific, Australia, and I'm going to see whenever I add region in here in a moment that there's also only one region for that country as well. So let's go ahead and add in region as well. Okay, and that's a good example of a sunburst chart. So what you can do with this now, though, is you can select items in here. So if I wanted to, I could select uh, the North America region here or North America group. You'll notice it does show you a percentage in the middle here of how much percent of that donut it's taking up or the sunburst it's taking up. So the North America eats up about 48% of the sunburst chart. And as you go deeper and deeper into this, so if I select United States here next, you can see we're looking at United States, takes up about 35.3%. It's also showing on the chart on the right-hand side as well. And then finally, if I want to go one step further, I can select Southwest, which takes up about 20% of the overall total here. And I can really see what the distribution looks like on the overall donut here. All right, and again, you can select uh, different areas if you wanted to. You can also, you know, kind of look and, and, and select which ones make sense, which ones you care about. You can click around, and it always shows you the percentage in the middle. Now, there are a few settings that you can do as far as the format paintbrush area that we've looked at in a number of times to all these custom visuals. If you go over to the format paintbrush on the right-hand side, you have all the standard types of uh, visualization customizations that you can make. Things like increasing the title size or renaming the title or centering the title. You can do things like that. Those things all exist in here by going underneath the title section. So I could rename this to something like quantity by region, something like that. You can also go a little bit further down. You can add in a background color if you wanted to. So I can turn on the background color, add in some sort of a background here. And if I don't want it to be so uh, bright, I can up the transparency, make it a little bit lighter so you can barely tell there's a background on it. I could also come in here. Let's keep the uh, selection there. I can also come in and lock the aspect ratio. We've talked about that a number of times. That basically makes sure, in this case, with a, with a uh, sunburst, it doesn't really matter. But with other charts, it may matter more about locking the aspect ratio, meaning when I resize this, it'll keep the proportions of it. It doesn't really matter so much with a sunburst or a donut or a pie chart. Under general, this controls the uh, position and the size of the chart. So if I wanted to remove it or if I wanted to resize it, I could uh, use this or I could just drag it and drop it like we've been doing. Underneath the border section here, you can add a border around it like so. I'll leave that on. And then finally, the one that's really relevant just to the sunburst is the group property here. And underneath the group property, there's one setting that you have available to you, which is called show selected. If you make that a little, a little larger, you can see that. Show selected basically changes whether or not you see that value here in the middle. So if I uncheck this, what it's going to do is it's going to take away what the selection was that I had. So that southwest that I showed just a moment ago, whenever I had that selected, moved away. Now you still have the tooltip when you hover above it. You can still see it whenever you hover above the value, but the value that was showing in the middle of the sunburst now no longer appears. So uh, I kind of like it on. I think it makes sense. That way you can see what you have selected in addition to the, the tooltip that pops up whenever you hover above it. Having some kind of value in the middle to, to represent what you actually have selected is pretty nice as well. All right, well, that's really it for the sunburst chart. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This is a pretty neat one that it allows you, to, again, to have cross-filtering between tables that you have or other visualizations that you have. And it does have that ability to do that grouping label in the middle, which is pretty nice as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Look forward to showing you our next custom visual.